It's time to bring it on with your email questions, and Pat is in the hot seat. He's ready. Well, Kathy writes, why is the Lord so long in answering prayers for salvation of family members? As a Christian, I have prayed faithfully for their salvation and tried to quietly live out Christ's love for them, but I am so discouraged. The grandchildren involved deserve a loving Christian home, and my heart is nearly breaking during this wait. I'm not doubting, just impatient for the blessings God has promised. What do you think, Pat? Well, you know, George Mueller of England uh, prayed for one guy for 50 years. And uh, it was only after George died that the man found the Lord, but he did come to the Lord. Just remember, I mean, this universe is 14 billion years old. God's in no hurry. <laughs> but uh, he'll answer your prayer if you believe him. All right? yeah, I'm always praying that, yeah. Lord, don't let our loved ones leave yeah, till yeah. they're safe. Well, sure. Anne writes, my neighbor is an atheist. When I tried to talk to him about Christianity and the beauty of God, he said that he's above God and that Christians are at the bottom of the barrel. What should I say to him? Um, I just quote a scripture. Mm. It is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. Don't argue with him. If he says, but I don't believe in that, it is appointed unto God once, uh, to man once to die and after that the judgment. But I don't believe, you know, there's a bunch of hooey. It is appointed to man once to die, and after that, the judgment. You leave him, and that'll come back, and he says, wow, what if she's right? Mm. All right, what's next? That's good. Well, Jennifer writes, I'm a believer and solid in my faith, but unfortunately, my brother is not. The problem is he has some really logical questions that I have difficulty answering. His main question is, if God knows everything, then he knows whether we're going to choose him or not. That being said, why would God create certain people if he knows they're just going to die and go to hell? What can I tell him? Good question. Well, I, I would tell him that uh, God knows everything, but he doesn't decide what's going to do. He gave man free will. And so these people <clears throat> have the freedom to choose God. The fact that God... This is a big theological debate that's going on forever. How do you square God's foreknowledge with predestination and man's free will? How do you do that? Well, uh, you're not a theologian and you don't have the answer, neither do I. <clears throat> but all we know is that man has free will. And these people that God has created, they have the ability to say yes or no. And uh, uh, God's giving them a chance. All right. All right, Betty says, I had open heart surgery and died twice on the table. I came out of the surgery with no pain, and the doctors couldn't believe it. God let me live, but took my son, and four years later took my husband. He died eight months ago, and my daughter died five weeks ago. Why would God let me live but take my loved ones? It's hard to understand. Uh, you know, a lot of servicemen have what they call survivor guilt. Uh, I was in a, a firefight. Four of my buddies were killed. I'm the only one that survived. Why did I get to live? And so they, they feel guilty. Look, uh, you use the term God took them. I'm not sure God took them. Uh, disease may have taken them. Uh, bad habits may have taken them. In a war situation, the, the combat with the enemy took them. And you say, well, why did God do it? Well, what God did was have mercy with you. But the fact that they died, the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Uh, for, the, for somebody who knows Jesus, death is the ultimate coronation. You're going to be with Jesus forever. And you, you're free of all the worries and all the hassles and all the pain and all the suffering. You're going to be with him in paradise. So. To, to die isn't a bad thing. Uh, we don't really want to hurry it because we like staying around in this world, but it's not a bad thing. All right. All right. Nadine writes, my husband and I have been separated for more than a year. He's a minister, and I left due to his extreme jealousy and mental emotional abuse. Since the separation, his daughter created a Facebook profile for him, and he's been speaking to all sorts of women online. He's become increasingly cold and rebellious, but continues to minister. I keep praying for his deliverance and healing and hoping for reconciliation and God's glory in our lives and ministry. But godly friends are telling me to give up and divorce him because there's no hope and he's crazy. <laughs> Am I wrong for holding on to the hope and 
healing and restoration. It sounds like the friends are pretty close to being on target. Uh, Women want to hold on, Pat. They want to hold on when there's no yeah, hope. I mean, well, you know? There's always hope. There's always hope. <laughs> so you, you never know. But I, I tell you, folks, uh, you keep praying, you keep hoping, but uh, this guy, you say he's, he's having affairs with women online or whatever. I don't know what he's doing, but uh, he's moved on. And I think, you know, maybe a divorce would bring him to his senses. Mm -hmm. But he sounds like he's gone over onto the deep side, the dark side. And I, I don't know what you say about him, but there's always hope. That's, right. that's the thing we know. There's always hope. And that's the best I can tell you.